I've seen some things this week. Amen. But if I didn't believe God was real, and I did, and if I didn't believe that God was powerful, and I did, then I would become a believer. Amen to God. If you will, I'd like to just minister of the Lord. Amen. Presented to me this week. Amen. On this special day dedicated to fathers. I think it's so appropriate that the Lord would put this profound message of extreme importance in my spirit on this special day for fathers. It's a message I feel that has some great profound information that we need to receive. And God wanted me to convey it to you as sons and his daughters. Last Monday, and you know that God, I have the cool of the experience on Monday. And God will show up and speak a word to me. Because I've always asked God to give me the word early. As a matter of fact, he told me he wanted to give it early. So that I could have it in my spirit. On Monday, as I was going in the shower after prayer, I clearly heard the voice of the Lord speak to me. And he spoke very expressly. And his words were simply this. There is a blessing in giving. There is a blessing in giving. Uh, my response to the Lord was, yes, Lord, I hear you. But if I keep giving and giving, will I not be depleted? There's one thing, it's one thing to give. It's another thing to always be giving. As a Lord, true Lord, I believe that there is a blessing in giving, but God cannot. Am I always supposed to give? I heard the Lord responded to me. And the Lord said to me, when you deplete yourself for the benefit of others, your stock is guaranteed to increase Amen. in me. Amen. Did he hear me? Amen. When you deplete yourself for others, your stock is guaranteed Hallelujah. to be increased in me. If you know anything about the stock market, the higher your stock rises, the fatter your pocket. But God's stock market is a different stock market. It guarantees a healthy return. Amen. So the Lord said to me, Andrew, deplete yourself so that your stock can grow in God. Well, I didn't say much. I said, well, okay, Lord. I hear you. You're God and you know what you're talking about. Sometimes we like to question God. When God speak. But we have to learn to come to a place to shut up. Amen. Well, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. <laughs> Gotta shut up sometime when God speaks. Amen. 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 Well, it didn't. It didn't take much longer after that that I got a call. Say Monday, I got a call, and I was home on Monday, and I got a call. And when I received this call, the person on the other end we were having a conversation, but then it went into an area, and when it went into the area. They, there was mention of that the moving day is coming. And moving day means finding a new place and having first and last. And the 
person said, well, I'm just praying God for the first and last. And I said, and Brother Cliff, you got to get that on the screen, sir. And I said, just the topic. And I said, okay, God, I hear you. I'm hearing God speaking. God said, listen. And the person said, moving day is coming. And first and last is due. And I'm listening very well. But as I listen, my mind is working. And then I said to the person, person, it's okay. I hear what you're saying. I'll give it to you. I'll give you the first. And the person said, yeah, I'll thank you. <laughs> I thank you. But what about the last? But what about the last? <laughs> I'm just praying God will give me the last. And then I said, well, I'll give it to you. No, Sister Julie didn't know. I broke the rule. And I said, I'll give it to you. And the person paused for a minute. Now hold up, I gotta give you numbers. Two thousand dollars. First and last. I said, I'll give it to you. I said, I'm gonna give it to you in my head. I said, I'll give it to you in secret. <laughs> but no child of God should be left hanging. Amen. Amen. Or left behind. Can we just preach that last one? Yeah. No child of God should be left hanging or behind. I said, I will give it to you. And then the person said, Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. I must tell you what God said. The person, when I laid in my bed this morning, and I asked God, who will give me this first and last? The prophet of God asked God. Who will? And you heard the voice of God said, Don't worry. Andrew will give it to you. <laughs> and when she said, Lord, I'm not going to ask him for it. The Lord said, you don't have to. That's the Lord. Oh Lord, I said shalom. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, it's a marvelous thing. Yes. Are you ready? And I said, oh well. And the person told me, I said, well, give God thanks. Because I didn't do it because I'm trying to get favor. Amen. Right. Amen. I do it because there's a principle in God Amen. that one ought to give. Amen. Especially to the household of faith. Amen. Amen. That's the word of God. Amen. Oh well. The same Monday. I went for a walk. And as. I was walking on the Monday. And many cars passed me. And many people walked by me. There were some paper on the floor. <laughs> And went to pick up the paper on the floor, and there was an envelope. Hello? Brother Cliff, you're not, you're too caught up in the message. <laughs> Click the envelope, sir. There was an envelope on the floor. It's coming. And when the envelope was picked up, I put the envelope aside, looked around. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Another one, Brother Clip. Looked around. Nobody. Cars right over it. Looked all around. Checked inside. No name on the envelope. I brought it as evidence. Jesus. No. 
bank statement on the inside because my natural inclination was to go to the bank and say I found a receipt in the business. Nothing on the inside. Nothing around. When I tallied the money, it was 2,500. Not 2,420. $2,500. And everybody walked past it and drove over it. You tell me God's not real. On the floor, cars ran over, and the money didn't just went here and there. Didn't go far. Breeze were blow, and it wouldn't move. <laughs> now I picked up the money and I said, "Lord Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> got some bills to pay, got something that, but something smote me in my spirit. It's not yours. Don't even bring it into your house." Right. Don't covet the money. Man. Because it's not yours. Oh my God. So I took the money and I, it, and I put it in my car. I said, I'm going to go with the leading of God. Yeah, there's evidence. That's my hand. That's my ring. That's the same watch. <laughs> and I said, I will not covet the money. I rolled it up and I put it down. I said, this is nothing but the move of God. Amen. I want to encourage you today. Nothing but the move of God. When I told, I called the prophet and said, hey prophet, I got something to tell you. I said, hear the word of the Lord. As I walked, I found, hallelujah. It was great rejoicing. Because somebody believed God. Yes. Somebody put themselves aside so that somebody else can grow and benefit. Yes. Oh Lord, help me in this place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And because it was in my heart to give, and God knows that I didn't have it to give. Yes. Amen. But I gave it anyways. God said, I will not leave you to be depleted. But I'm going to give you the money to give them and give you a brother. I'll give you extra Amen. to show my glory. Oh, Jesus, help me in this place. Proverbs 11, 24 to 27 says, one man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withhold it, unduly, but comes to poverty. When you hold back on giving, you're holding back on your own blessing. Oh, help me in this place. Luke 6, 38 tells us that give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall a man give unto your bosom. For the same measure that he met with all, it shall be measured unto you. Yes. The same desire that you have in your heart to give, God will honor it. Yes. Amen. Go ahead, sir. Amen. I got to tell you about that five extra hundred dollars. That five extra hundred dollars didn't go in my pocket. For somebody else needed it. Amen. And somebody else got it. Hello, somebody. Amen. Somebody has needed it, and somebody, and then God bless me again. Amen. I will tell you about that one. That will blow your mind. That will blow everybody's mind in this house. He blessed me again because I took the extra five hundred and gave it to somebody. He multiplied it by a hundred. Amen. That might be my best friend. <laughs> Oh, everybody's quiet in this house. There's a power. There's a blessing in giving. Oh, mean people, I'm talking to you in the house today. I want to talk to you. There's a blessing.
said, Sister Julie, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure shaking up. God is my desire to do the will of God. Hey, God every day gives. Amen. And if you have the spirit of God, you should have a giving spirit. Amen. Amen. In this place, the Lord is trying to teach us this morning is that our blessings are only found outside of our comfort zone. Our blessings are only found outside of our comfort zone. I remember a few years ago, I, I had some money. I had $15,000. And I said that I'm going to take these $15,000 and I'm going to invest it. And when I went to the investment broker, he said to me, well, if you want to make money on your money, you got to put it in high risk. I said, well, yeah, put it in high risk because I want to make some money on it. Oh, Lord God. And so I put it in, so the money was depleted. So I put it in, so the money was depleted. Until my $15,000 became $1. And I said, Sister Susie, I will never again Invest in high risk. Amen to God. Never again will I put. When the Lord spoke to me and said, "Yes, I know that you lost your money," but He made it clear to me that like unto Israel, Amen to God, who could not get their blessing in bondage, Amen to God. So the Church of God will never see the full man, fulfillment promise until they completely deplete themselves. Go ahead. Israel could not realize the promise in bondage. You got to come out of your comfort zone. Israel didn't all want to leave Israel, Egypt. Because even though they were under certain bondage, they had privileges. Some of us are not rich. But we live with a certain percentage of privilege. Go ahead, sir. Man. And I don't want to come out of my little privilege because all I have is my little privilege. Man. And if I come out of my privilege, I'm going to be depleted and I'm going to find myself in an uncomfortable zone. But I want to tell you this morning that you'll never realize the blessing of God until you move into your uncomfort zone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me what I'm saying this morning? Israel had to walk out of the only thing that they knew. Come on, Abraham. He had to walk out of the only thing they knew in order to understand or to realize their destiny. Yes, leave it. You'll never know what God has in store for you until you walk out of your comfort zone. Oh, Lord, help me in this place. Somebody said, easier said than done. No, it's hard to do it. It is not easy to walk out of your comfort zone. But if you turn to me, it is not easy to know that all you have is $500. Come on, with a with man on the mic. It's not easy to know that you have only $500 to pay your bill and somebody wants $550 from you. For all you can think about is your $500 that you have to pay your bills. Oh God. But God is saying this morning that if you want to see the blessing, if you want to see what I have in store for you, if you want to see the measure shake up and pour in your bosom, you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone into an area where you have never been. Step out. So I say, yeah, you can say what you want. I say, you can say what you want. <laughs> But I'm here to tell you, not only by excellence of speech, but by the demonstration of the power of God. Yes. That when I stepped out of my comfort zone, I had three children and a wife that would get on my case. <laughs> but I stepped out, not knowing, not caring where that money would come from. Right. Not saying, oh Lord, 
I'm giving up my life. I stepped out and said, here, this is what I have. You need it more than I do. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Welcome. And while I was doing that, God had a plan. My destiny was already set. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you stay in Egypt, you can realize the grape and the cucumber that's in the promised land. But the grapes in the promised land are bigger than the grapes in Egypt. The glory of God is in the promised land and you have bondage. These are the people who are always worried about every little two cents. They're always going to be worried about every little two cents. For the rest of their life, all they're going to think about is their little two cents in their pocket. And you'll never be blessed. Oh God, I gotta talk to you. Amen to God. I'm talking to the Lord. Amen. As you know, I went to my old church last. Oh yes, last week. Amen. It's a different, a more mature church. Amen. It's a different way of delivering the word of God. And God said, I wish in my life, hey, Andrew, you gotta just teach the people. You gotta teach the people what I'm saying. You don't have to be in a rush. You just speak to the people and teach them the word of God. I want to tell you there's a power in giving. Amen. Yes. You'll never find your blessing within your comfort zone. Amen. Amen. Oh God. Go ahead. Can I talk to you for a minute? Excellence requires discomfort. Yes, it does. Excellence requires discomfort. To get to excellent, you can't be in comfort. It requires some pushing. It requires some struggling. It requires some hardship. It requires some down and worrisome thing. But to get to excellent, I can't stay in my comfort zone. Hallelujah, God. The king said in Ecclesiastes 11, 4 to 6, he said, do not toy with maybes or might have been. Right. Start where you can and recognize how limited your role is. In other words, it is not you that do it, but it's God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It is God that does the work. You got to realize that it's God that's at work. Yes. in your life to bring you to your destiny. Yes. But to get to your destiny, you first have to step out yes. of your comfort zone. Yes. Oh, you know, God. If you stay in your comfort zone, you'll never realize your destiny. If you think you can just stay by yourself and have the little, two little shilling together, you'll never get anywhere. Yes. 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 You have to learn to walk out. Tell somebody walk out. You have to, to walk out of your comfort zone. You got to realize, amen to God, that if you have two, you got to give one. Amen. When John the Baptist was preaching, they came to him and said, John, what shall we do? He said, if you have two coats, give one. Glory oh, be to God. So it was many coats. Too much coats. What if God were to let all your thing rot? Because all, you'll never stop to consider that somebody else may need one of what you have. Wow. And you come to the house of God and you say you want to be blessed. You will never be blessed in your comfort zone. You will never be blessed in your comfort zone, Sister Nicole. You can stay in your comfort zone and murmur and talk all you want, but I'm here to tell you that God said if you want to get excellent, if you want to realize your destiny, if you want to know what God has in store for you, you got to step out from where you are. Step out of your comfort zone. Say, Lord, I, Abraham, I seek a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what God has in store for me, but all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! You've got to have a purpose-driven life. You've got to have a life filled with purpose. You gotta know that God didn't bring you to the world and bring you into the church for you to come and sit down and warm the bench. Amen. 
He came, he brought you to make a difference. Yes. Oh, we have these bench warmers in the house of God. Just bench warmers. Every week do the same old thing. You think you're going somewhere in God? And God help me in this place. The problem is, ourselves get in the way. Oh, it's a big ego pain. Ourselves, self is the greatest problem I have. Because I want to benefit without incurring any sacrifice. I want all of the grace, but I don't want to fight the enemy. Oh God, help me in this place. Help me to preach it right, Jesus. I want to be rich, but I don't want to work. Oh, hallelujah to God. I want God to just open up the money chambers in heaven and pour me out a blessing. Oh, what you doing? I'm waiting on God. Well, keep waiting. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Yes, he wants you to lean on him, but you have to do something. Work while it's day. Blessings are not free. You got to participate in it. Come on, somebody. Self get in the way. Paul said, but I will do good, evil presents itself. And evil only presents a package. And when evil presents a package, I have to make the choice. And I always choose myself. Because that's my nature. I'll always choose myself. And I'll never choose others. I'll never consider others because myself it's always in the way. Oh God. Hallelujah to God. Amen to God. But God said, if you can incur sacrifice, you can get the blessing. Come on, somebody tell the devil that he's a liar. Tell the devil that he's a liar. He's nothing but a liar. Amen. God wants me to tell you that you need to stop holding back on what God gave. Amen. What you have. It was God that gave it. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. I have some silent people in the house. Oh, keep holding your peace. Amen to God. You flaunt and you flaunt. You think it's yours? It was God that made it. Amen. It was God that gave it. Stop holding back on what God gave you. He blessed you so that you can bless others. Don't rejoice over that. Yeah. Amen to God. And yeah. hey, I want to tell you something. I'll continue to bless you because the more I bless you, the more I'm blessed. Yeah. I always get up to preach a word of God. So when I get up to preach a word and bless your spirit, God will always turn around and bless me. I'll always bless somebody. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be my God. If I have $20, I'll give it to you. Yeah. For I know my Father. Hallelujah to God. Uh, and, and we have some fathers. Don't repeat it. All they want is gimme, gimme. They hook up with the woman. And all they came for is pleasure. And when they got pleasure, they're gone. And you don't see them again. Never. And all they care about is themselves. Amen. I had a father like that. Amen to God. He showed up some seven, eight times. Had a bunch of children, and the man could not be seen. Glory be to God. Left us, he was gone. And all he, whenever he showed up, you knew he wanted something. He was opportunistic. Always showed up when he want. Give me, give me, give me. Glory be to God. But in all his selfishness, God still gave him good gifts. Amen. For he had seven children. 
And these seven children, uh, five out of the seven are praising God. Amen. Hallelujah to God. He still got good gifts. I want to tell deadbeat fathers, you might not be there for your children, but God made them, and he is their father. And I grew up with a dead, with a deadbeat father, deadbeat only father, but I have a father in heaven who cared for me. Oh, be the God. I was in need of nothing. Ah, I cursed the mackerel and rice that I ate, but it was still God that provided Amen. Who sat in the sea that night? It was God who caused the rice to grow out of the ground from the wheat. It was God who provided. Glory to the Lord. God provided for every good gifts and all perfect gifts come from the Father of life, with whom there is no variables, either shadow of turning. My Father might change his mind, but God never changes. Amen. Come on, clap your hand and give God praise. The Father who never changes. I am the Lord. I change and not. Yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I got a changing Father. I'm changing Father. I'm changing Father. I'm changing Father. I'm changing Father. I just want to talk to you for it. If God, you said, gave it to you, why are you acting like it can be taken away? Glory be to God. Some of us get a little coin and say, well, God gave it to me. When God gives you something, no man can take it away. For the gifts and calling of God is without repentance. So God said, you're blessed, Sister Susie. I don't care what the devil said. You are blessed. Oh, hallelujah to God. When God said, you're blessed, you are blessed. Oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, let me tell you this. Your financial and social solace may be your neck shackle. Because we put all our emphasis in what we have accrued. We put our comfort in what we have gained financially. And we feel safe in our social setting. You know those people say, I've got friends. I've got friends in high places. But I want to tell you something about neck shackles. Neck shackles were used for slaves. Help me, Jesus. And when you are neck shackled, that means you're under bondage. And if your money and your social surrounded is your solace, then you are shackled and you're a slave to your money and your social surrounding. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, help me now. Glory be to God. And I don't want to be a slave to any money. Amen. And I don't want to be a slave to any man. For money has no friends and money has no name. And when money leaves you, your friends will leave you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Sometimes you feel you have money and you feel safe. Have you ever had money and you feel safe? You feel like that's all you need. I, I, I got a hundred thousand dollars in my pocket. Wow, I feel good, but that hundred thousand dollars, you keep spending one dollar and one dollar in a hundred in, in a matter of time, that money is all gone. Yes. That's right. I will not put my money and my solace in and my, my confidence in money and friendship. That's right. But I put my trust in God. Amen. I will put my trust in God. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Help me now. Help me, Jesus. Paul said now in the Corinthians, I, and Lord want me to just take my time and talk to you. Paul said in the Corinthians, can I take my time? He said, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, he which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider yourself. 
I said, what do you mean by that, God? And the Lord said, when you find somebody, even in a financial drought, the mandate is to help that one. When you see your church is in a financial sense, some people don't even inquire how the church is doing. Some people that show up to church and drop their two cents that they're gone. Not wondering, not caring how the house of God is going. Some people only care about themselves. They say, all I have to give is 50 bucks and I'm going to drop it. Nobody stops to inquire. I wouldn't say nobody. But a lot of people don't even stop to inquire how the church is doing. Do you know the church is the poorest place? Yes. The poorest institution? Yes. Do you know that the, poor, the church cannot gain any money of itself? I'll be quiet. Yes. Do you know sometimes your brothers and sisters are in so much a tight situation that God needs you to get up and to pour out yourself to them so that they can be blessed, so that he can bless you? Paul said, if a man is overtaken with a fault, and a fault doesn't mean that he sinned, a fault means also a situation. If a man is overtaken in a situation, you which are blessed at the moment, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering yourself, lest you end up in the same situation. Amen. Sometimes you think you won't end up in the same situation. I'm here to tell you that the devil and you are liars. For when you start saying peace, peace, sudden destruction. He said, Bear one another, burden, and so. Fulfill the law of Christ. Bear each other's burden. To bear something, that means you have to carry it. That means you have to put it on your shoulder. Amen. And I thank God for having me teach today instead of preaching and getting your skin excited. You gotta learn to bear somebody. You gotta learn to carry somebody else's burden. If you hear that sister so and so or brother so and so is in need, you can't block your ears. No. <laughs> we get up and we say we have need and everybody block their ears no. since the so and so have need and everybody fall asleep <laughs> but if I come to tell you that you're going to be blessed you get your skin get excited Amen. you hypocrite Amen. you're a hypocrite Amen. I come to tell you that there's a problem. Amen. And the problem is found in you. Yes. Say me, Lord. Somebody say me, Lord. Yes. Because I only think of myself. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, not me. Yeah, you. Yes. Because you only give to the end of your comfort. Yes. But you will not exceed your comfort zone. Because all you think about is your bills. All you think about is your situation. Watch this. He said, bear one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, and talk about something, we're talking about something in God. If a man think to see himself as something in God, he is nothing. He deceived himself. Sometimes we think we're so special in God. Yeah, when somebody didn't need you, can't give a dollar. Somebody comes to you and says, I need $5,000, you buckle your knees. And you know you have 20 in the bank. I like it when it's quiet and I get to speak. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. And all you're thinking about is your security. Well, I've got to think about my security. Oh, yes. Well, keep thinking, you selfish. And that which you store up, Right. You'll never spend. Go ahead, sir. For the wicked, store it up for the righteous. You're going to drop that 20, that 20,000 that you have. It's going to fall on the street and the righteous is going to walk by and pick it up. You can't say the devil is a lie. You're going to say amen. amen. I've got proof. Amen. Can I teach 
same teaching. Yes. So you think you're somewhere in God. I like this. Look at four. But let every man prove his own work. Prove it. Show that you're something in God. Then he shall have rejoicing. It's not me saying that I'm somewhere in God. It's me doing what the will of God says. Amen. If I do the will of God, I'm somewhere in God. Faith without work is dead, standing alone. Can't say I have faith in God and I have no action. If I say I have faith in God and I'm walking with God, I should act like God. And God always gives. Amen. Mean people don't want to hear this message. Go to sleep. Lullaby babies. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. For every man shall bear his own burden. I like that because that's powerful. Every man shall give an account to God. Every man shall bear his own burden. That means when you think you're getting by, you're going to have to face God. Amen. You're answerable to God. What have you done with the dispensation that I've given you? And many people have many stories. And you know the problem is, you give to the people that you want to give to. You have your favorite charity. You have your, you, I give, I give. But you're not giving where God said to give. Right, go ahead, sir. Hallelujah. You have somebody say, oh, I give her, oh, I give her, I give this. You give what you want, the amount that you want. When God comes to take give, God says, give up. Not you, not you, not you. But you're answerable to God. Your favorite friend that you give, your favorite person that you give. You can't just give one person and say you're giving. Let God come and tell you how to give. Amen. When God, you know what? I, I, some of you don't want to hear God to give. You're afraid of what, how much God's going to say. When God said, give it, you go. You start sighing. You start sighing when God said, give your last $5,000. So God wouldn't say that. <laughs> God wouldn't say that. Why would God do that to me? It's powerful for the woman with her last mind. The Bible says she came and she had her last mind. And she walked up to the offering plate. And she dropped it in the offering plate. The Bible never said he blessed her. You see, you wanted the, Bible, the text to go on to, and as she gave her last night, she walked to the door, and God blessed her. The text ended after she gave. For it's after you give that you're in your discomfort zone. It's after you give. It's not give it. It's after you give. And when you're in that place where you don't know where you're getting the last, the next meal from. Oh, come on, sugar by this woman. Come on, come on. Hey, I have one morsel of flour and a pound of oil. And the man of God said, give me first. My God. 99.9% of you would have never given it to him. Let him quit. He's no man of God. If he was a man of God, he would know that I'm on my last meal. Well, that's where God wants you. Yeah. He wants you to be hungry. Yeah. But even hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. God wants you to be hungry so you can ask, oh God. Oh glory be to God. The woman gave of her last morsel of flour and she gave her last pint of oil. And the Bible said that the prophet of God turned to her and said, Thus said the Lord. There's something about God. Thus said the Lord doesn't come before you give. Amen. Thus said the Lord, always come. Ah. Oh God. Glory be to God. Hey, you want God to tell you, don't worry. Everything is going to be alright. The God is not about money. God then speaks to you before the fact. He wants you to see what you're going to do. Amen. When you're in the situation. The situation will determine who you are. Amen. Your situation will determine where you go. And your situation will dictate your destiny. Oh 
Oh God, help me in this place. Right. Glory be to God. It's an Adam that proves himself. Yeah. Bear his own burden. Let him that is God in the word communicate unto them. That teach him all good things. Be not deceived. God is mm. not mocked. Tell somebody, be not deceived. Be not, not deceived. God is not mocked. Oh. What to the man saw it? Wow. Bless the Lord. If you saw victory, you shall reap victory. Yes. If you saw corruption, went to a funeral a few years ago. Amen. A great illustrious bishop. Oh. Bishop with every title you can imagine. Doctor, prophet, priest. Amen to God. Every title in the name. And while the funeral was going on, somebody walked up to the podium. His own family member. Who evidently knew more than we knew. He said, if you lie down dirty, you're going to wake up there. Mm -mm. And he turned and walked off. He said, Jesus Christ. Whatever you saw, see, you can't put corn down in the garden and expect oranges. Whatever you put down, that's exactly what you're going to get. Come on, somebody. Man. God is not mocked. You can't live as a pretentious Christian and expect to walk in glory. Lord Jesus. You know it's good when everybody goes. You can't live selfishly and expect the abundance of glory. You can walk with Satan and expect to walk with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Be not deceived. Amen. Glory to God. Deceived, you're walking a deceptive way. Right. You're fooling yourself thinking that God loves you. I said on Wednesday night that everybody walk around saying, Oh, Jesus is the God is love. God is love. And who has bewitched you? Walk around, and that's your cover. God is love. God is love. God is love. Yes, he's love. But he's also a consuming fire. Amen. Oh Amen. Amen. And your default is that God is love. Amen. We know God is love. Amen. But God is a principled God. Amen. God is a principled God. Amen. And if he asks you to walk one way, and you are contrary to what he said, you shall reap mm. what you sow. Amen. Oh, glory. Be not deceived. God is not man. And if a man sword that shall reap, Peter said to the Lord, Lord, I have given all. I have given all to follow you. When was the last time you gave all? When was the last time you gave all? When was the last time you had your last and gave all? the last time. He not deceived. God is not mouth. For he that sow it in the flesh shall reap corruption. But he that sow it in the spirit shall reap life everlasting. Tell somebody good investment. Good investment. It's a good investment. It's a great investment. To sow up the spirit. Amen. In other words, it's a good investment to go in the leading of God. Amen. And what God said to do, that must you do. Amen. You have to do it continuously. Amen. When God said move, you gotta move. Amen. Right said, when God gets ready, ready you gotta move. You gotta move. Let not, he said, and let us not be weary in well doing. Amen. Here's where we have a problem. Because we get weary. Yeah. Yeah. We get tired of being the one who's always doing it. Because yeah. I'm always the one doing it. Yeah. But Jesus is the one who's always giving you breath. Amen. Yeah. I'm the one who always do it. Yeah. But Jesus is the one who's always restoring you. Yeah. Be not weary yeah. in well doing. God, if I were preaching this morning about how you're going to be blessed tomorrow, you'll be so excited. You'll be jumping around and saying, I'll be blessed tomorrow. 
You can't be weary to give up your resources. I didn't expect an amen there. Hallelujah to God. I don't expect much amen from here on. Glory to the keep it to yourself and sleep if you want. Glory to God. You can't be weary to give up yourself and you can't be weary to give up your resources. You keep coming to God and give a little. Yes. Apostolic, we're great at giving little. Because we expect little. Stay on. Come on. Touch it. We have the little mentality. Come on, it's true. Bless the Lord. Apostolic, we really don't believe that God is an abundant God. So we do little. Give an offering, you give two cents. Give an offering. And he said, the pastor has teeth the money. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm talking truth. Yes. I'm not talking about my own volition. Yes. I'm talking what the Lord put in my spirit. Yes. Yes. Hey, and people don't want to give, but people want to be blessed. Yeah. It doesn't work like You can't be weary in well-doing. Yes. But you got to give Amen. the things that you don't even have. Amen. Oh God, the old church back in the old country. Amen to God. There's some people sold their cows and sold their chickens and sold everything so the house of God can be erected. Amen. Amen. Ah! Yes, yes. But we live in a time and a season where you can go and do what you want to do. But I can tell you the same thing. You will never be blessed. Oh my God. Hey, come on, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I don't have much to give God thanks for. Yeah. I know I'm a living witness. I didn't get away to preach something I don't know. God has blessed me in so much abundance this week. I can't even tell you. If I were to tell you, you wouldn't believe me how much God has blessed this young boy's life. The more I give, the more I receive. Glory be the God of the house. Yes, Lord. Give it to the Lord. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yes. Yeah, glory be to God. The Bible tells of a story, and it's a profound story. The Bible said there was a man named Jephthah. Ah. Glory be to God. The Bible said, old Jephthah, old Jephthah. Amen to God, the son of Gilead. Yes. The Bible said Gilead had a wife and children, but Gilead snuck on him and mm -hmm. slept with a harlot. Glory be to God. The Bible said he had a son with this harlot, right. and this son, he named him Jephthah. The Bible said when Gilead died and the sons rose up and kicked him out saying, get out of here. You will not have of our father's inheritance. Glory be to God. And that's how we feel when people get off the streets. We have some people who come off the streets and come into the house of God trying to find life. But we have some of the people that are born in this kingdom. Kick them out and say, yeah, you can't intermingle with us. We have some drug dealers who come off the streets. Glory be to God. And when they come into the house of God, we have not a kind spirit in us. We cross them aside. We put them in categories. But the devil is a liar. And you, so are you. We have some people who've been sexually abused, who have been molested, and have those psychological problems. When they come into the house of God, you move your son and your daughter away from them. Say you won't mix them. You separate them like Jephthah. You throw them to the dunghill. They Jephthah, Lord, help me in this place. But the Bible said Jephthah went to the land of Todd. And when he went down to the land of Todd, all the rejects came with him. And all the rejects found him. There's something about when you have a special calling on your life, you attract people. Jephthah went down to the land of Todd. And people joined themselves unto you. But who? The stone which the builder rejected. The same shall become the chief for the soul. Jephthah was rejected. When Jephthah went down to Todd, Jephthah built up himself in his most holy faith. You might reject me now. You might reject this word of God. But when you see me walk in this, hallelujah. When you see me walk again, I might have left scrawny, but when I came back, I'm filled with muscles. I might have left when I came back, I'm rich and filled with goodness. Glory be to God. I am a 
trying to keep me out. I might have been stupid. When I came back, I'm filled with the knowledge and the power of God. Hey, you kick me out one way. But while I was down in the valley of the shadow of death, it was the Lord that stretched forth his head and took me out of the eagle's wings. Hallelujah. The Bible said that Israel had a problem for the Ammonites came upon them hallelujah and they had no power when you don't give when you don't bless people God won't bless you the canker worms will eat away all your riches the enemy will destroy your city hallelujah Satan will destroy your family when you're mean as Kamuchin such a word. Hallelujah. That old dragon will deplete you. But I come by to tell you how my weakness, my weeping may endure for a night. But joy, my joy is coming in the morning. My joy, somebody cry joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. The half has never yet been told. Can I talk to you for a minute? When they were in trouble, they went down to Todd and said, Oh, Jephthah, we're looking for Jephthah. We're looking for a scrawny, poor, and depleted boy. But we ran into a big old giant. But when the Lord is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. When the glory of the Lord is flowing, and when the abundance is pressed down and shaped up and poured into my bosom, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. And the places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. And the way I used to look, I look different now. And the way I used to speak, ah, uno, uno, uno. now I speak like a creature, born again, washed in the blood of God, sanctified, filled with power. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said that when they went down to the land of Tod, they saw Jephthah. Jephthah didn't look the same old way. Jephthah didn't talk the same old way. Jephthah was big. Jephthah was powerful. Jephthah had powerful words. And Jephthah had an army. Can I talk to you? So Israel said, Jephthah, we want you to rule over us. The same person you reject. That's why you got to watch the way you treat people. Watch the way you treat people. But the same person you reject is the same person you're going to have to bow down to. Come on, Job's friends. Come on, Job's friends. The Bible said that they said, come on now, rule over us. But Jephthah said, I thought I was a reject. I thought I wasn't one of yours. They said, we don't care what we said in the past. Just rule over us. Hallelujah. When I read the scriptures, brethren, I said to myself, if that were me, God, I would have said, where from me? Move from me. But Jephthah said, these are of the household of faith. And I read it for this word. These are my brethren of the household of faith. Amen. I can reject them, but they need my help. I've got to put myself down. I've got to deny myself. And I got to take up the cross. And I got to do the will of God. The Bible said, Jephthah, now, oh God, help me. Jephthah, now, decided that he's going to do by God. He said, I'm going to fight. I'm gonna fight for my people. Tell somebody I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight. Just I'm gonna put myself down for the good of the people. Help me, Jesus. But now Jephthah went to God and Jephthah said, Lord, hear my cry. The Ammonites are upon us. But he said, Lord, if you give me the battle, if you give me this very battle, the first thing that comes out of my house, I'm gonna give it back to you. Hallelujah. Jephthah was selfless. To be blessed, you gotta be selfless. To be blessed, you gotta get out of your comfort zone. You gotta put some things on the altar. He said, whatever, whatever it takes. Come on, you're not ready. Whatever it takes to get the blessing, that I will do. 
Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, God, I will walk out of some of the relationship that I have. Some of the situations that I'm in. Whatever it takes, God. The Bible said that God heard him. And God said, Yes, Jephthah. The Bible said, Jephthah went into battle. Glory be to God. He went into battle. And when he went into battle, God, the Ammonites got slain. The Ammonites got beat down. God. And Israel got. The victory. Hallelujah. Ah, Jephthah came back in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest. Yes, it's one thing to tell God, it's another thing to fulfill your promise. Amen. 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 For a lot of times we promise God things that we have never done. God, if you take me out of this situation this time, I promise I'll serve you. Oh, no. If you pull me out of this bed that I'm in, if you pull me out of this one, God, I promise I'll serve you. The Bible said that when Jephthah walked up to his house, his only child walked out. Get a crux of the message. When Jephthah saw that his only child walked out, he remembered the vow he vowed to God. That's right. He said, Darling, you're one of them that vexed my heart. You vexed me today. Because I made a vow to God. It's easy to make the vow. But it's hard to pay. It's easy to agree with God. It's easy to say, I do in a marriage, but it's hard. To do the essential to keep it going. It's easy to say, Lord, I'll go through with you. But when hell is let loose on you, it's hard to stay with God. It's easy to say, Lord, I walk with you. But when your need for a man or woman come upon you, it's not easy to stay celibate. It's easy to say, Lord, bless me. But it's not easy when God asks in return. The Bible said that when his daughter came out, he helped me, Jesus. He said, well, girl, I've made a vow to God. I don't know. I don't know if I I don't know if I can keep it. It's not easy to walk out of your comfort zone. It's not easy. Jephthah was out of his comfort zone. He said, Lord, I don't know. I could do this. Glory to God. Watch this. But the God said, Father. Oh Lord, help me, Jesus. I wish we had some Jephthah's daughter in this house. Father, if you made a vow to God, you gotta keep it. Man. Oh Lord. Oh my God. Oh God, somebody said Jephthah's daughter. Jephthah's daughter. The Bible didn't give her a name. Just called her Jephthah's daughter. She said, Daddy. If you made a vow to God, you gotta keep it. What did you tell God? Don't. I've got to sacrifice you. 
No, not sa sacrifice on an altar, but I've got to sacrifice your life and you've got to give you over to God. You can't be married. You can never have children. But you have to give yourself over to the temple of God forever. Many of us would have said, well, you made the vow. <laughs> I didn't make no vow to God. You, you opened your big mouth. I need a man. But Jephthah's daughter said, Daddy, you said, and I'm going to honor it. Oh God, help me in this place. I'm going to honor it. For it's better to give than to receive. Amen. The young girl, when I looked at her, I would marvel, I marvel at this young girl. Because she said, Father, I was asking you for two months. Let me go hang out with my friends. Up and down the mountains for two months. Just give me two months. Let me just beware my virginity. Let me just hang out with my friends. And then I will give myself to the vow. I come by to tell us at this place today. Amen to God. You've been holding back on God. But the Lord spoke to me very profoundly. He spoke to me to tell you that it's time for you to come out of your comfort zone. It is time for you to start giving not only your resources, but giving of yourself. Glory to God. God wants to bless you, but he will never bless you in your situation. Until you come out of your comfort zone. The Bible said Jephthah's daughter gave herself over. And she gave of herself. For the vow to God was of more importance than our own life. Her commitment, her father's commitment to God was of greater importance than anything she could have gained. How many of us in this house that they feel that the things of God are more important than your own life? God wanted me to talk now to tell you that there's a greater blessing in giving than receiving. Amen. You've been praying to God and asking him for a blessing. And you've been waiting for the blessing. And you've been waiting for a long time. And you've been wondering, why is it that I'm not blessed? The Lord said, why are you not blessed? Because you are not a giver. But if you'll hear me today in this place. And fathers, if you'll hear me in this place. God is looking for givers. God is looking for somebody who's willing to bless somebody more than receive. God said, I want to bless you, but how can I bless you when there's no capacity? God will bless you when there is capacity. Man. But if your capacity is full, then you can never be blessed. But the greater the capacity, the greater the blessing. Amen. The greater the vessel, the greater the blessing. That woman with the oil, the Bible said the man of God blessed her. And when he blessed her, the Bible said, as many vessels as she could find, as long as she could find a vessel, the oil continued to flow. As long as there is capacity, there will always be a flow. But in order to have capacity, you got to deplete yourself. Oh God. You got to deplete yourself of your earthly desire. Deplete yourself of everything early so God can bless you. Hey, glory to God. Spiritually. Amen. 
The problem is that we're not willing. No matter how much the preacher stand and the preacher preach, we're not willing. No matter how much the preacher tells you that God wants to bless you, we're not willing. We're not willing. We still go back to ourselves. What about me, God? And God answers, what about you? What about my problems? The Lord is a greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What about me, God? He said to tell you it's not about you. Amen. It's not about you. But if you'll hear my voice today, God wants to bless us. But he cannot bless us because we're full. The thing that you have planted carnally is growing your capacity. And God cannot bless you. But he sent me by the day to tell you that your blessing is only found in your uncomfort zone. You might not think this message is of any imperative or importance. But I need you to understand something powerful in this place. That God will never bless you until you bless others. Amen. God will never give you a desire unless you give somebody theirs. Amen. You'll never have an overflow in your life until you pour out in somebody else's. That's right. Little is much. God is in it. When God is in it. Amen. It's the little that God is talking about. None of us here have Bill Gates money. But the little that you have is of more value. For somebody is in need right now. God wants to bless them, but he needs you to be the catalyst of blessing. But all we do, we think about ourselves. I don't have it. I can't afford it. I can't give it. Sister Nicole pulled up a picture of Mother Teresa earlier. Say what you want to say about Mother Teresa. But Mother Teresa, she gave what she did not have. And when she gave all her resources, she gave all of her life. So that somebody could be blessed. Amen. What have you done thinking? Who have you blessed thinking? What life has you changed lately? Have you checked your prayers lately? It's all it's been about you. Your prayers have been about you and you and you and you. You've been praying for healing, deliverance. You've been praying for everything for you. But God said it's not about you. I need you to bless somebody. I need you to wake up someday and bless somebody. I need you to change somebody's life. I need you to turn around somebody's situation. I need you to be a help in time of trouble. These kind of messages don't go over well with people. But now all they're thinking about is how much do I have to give? Well, God don't put a number on giving. Bless the Lord, Jesus. God never puts number on giving. He just wants you to give your all. Is your all on the other?